Okay, uh, let's get started. Lecture Module 8, World Wide Web and Internet. Um, and a lot, of the, a lot of the textbook material, I'm not going to just, you know, essentially read through. Um, some of it is basic knowledge that we already possess. Um, others is, is fine, just, just reading it. What I really want to do with this chapter, and really from this point forward throughout the rest of the semester, is really apply what we've, le we've learned to date and look at it from other perspectives. Again, the textbook, you know, Understanding Computers, it's just about the computers and technology. It has some, you know, society and ethics, things like that, you know, mixed in. But what I really hope is that we really look at everything, especially technology, with the business technology IT triangle in mind, because it's not just technology. How is it changing things? We can just look at the internet and World Wide Web. Has that changed business? Has that changed society? Yes, very much so. The other thing that we should always have foremost in our minds is security, okay? And we start security next week. And you'll hear me, you've heard me state, and you'll hear me state again, security can be thought of as, and this is just, just me, it's, you're not gonna find this in the text anywhere, 75% policy. Okay, and I'll give more examples later. But consider just the internet. If I choose to never connect my computer to the internet, my policy, What's the likelihood that I'll ever catch a virus, worm, or anything like that? Almost, almost nil, okay? Now I'll have to do proper management of USB drives and other, other mechanisms if I'm sharing data. But again, without the internet, of course, you know, the changes that have taken place to business and society would not have ch taken place. But also, I wouldn't have as many threats to my computing environment, okay? So we're actually gonna open here with a TED talk, the Internet of Things. Um, you heard me state on day one, you know, we had the Industrial Revolution and, and it changed, changed the world. And we're living through the Information Revolution. Some people are calling it that, some people aren't. And I maintain that it's going to have even a bigger impact on the world than the Industrial Revolution. And we're seeing that. You know, you look at just the Internet, you look at Facebook's and its impact on the Egyptian Revolution. I mean, it fueled that fire. Um, just many different issues here that, that, you know, the internet is improving life, but there are some areas where, you know, it's, you may, may think that it, it is not improving life. So this, um, where we are now is we're seeing the emergence of the internet of things. Um, and Cisco actually, we know Cisco, um, cites this or, or calls it the internet of, internet of everything because they don't include just the inan inanimate objects and things. It's really the internet of people, processes, and things. And that's and really, that's my belief too. It is really the integration of all of these. Um, <clears throat> so during his talk, and he'll present many, you know, the societal or business impacts of the internet of things, but also think privacy, privacy, think security. And some things, this, this video was shot, I think, in 2012. I think it predates um, the video that we saw on the Disney, the Touche surfaces. Because when we look at the Internet of Things, of course, they have an ID and an Internet ad address, but they have sensors. Think about how just sensors are changing. I mean, we have security systems now that are being installed in walls, so you really can't get to them, and they will detect when a person is, is in the room and exactly where they're standing. And you start looking at all these things, the, the Disney Touche service of how, you know, you're touching a table, where you're standing, what you're doing, all of these things, that just the privacy concerns. Privacy may be, you know, a foregone conclusion in the, in the very near future. And, that, and that's rather frightening. So let's, let's have a look here. personality and my life, but I can clearly remember when I first browsed a web page. And I did it using the Mosaic browser. Before running out of Netscape, and the first popular multimedia browser. But it constantly amazes me when I look back and see it was released only in 1993, less than 20 years ago. And now we have this cloud, this digital universe of information freely available to us. At a current estimate, it's 
around about 4,000 exabytes in size. Now, we don't use exabytes in everyday conversation. But a good analogy is that 4,000 exabytes is roughly equivalent to a stack of books from here to Pluto and back 80 times. And we only began to create that less than 20 years ago. And if you start to think about it, it's even more astonishing that we have devices like these, which allow us to access this digital universe information from anywhere and at any time. And with over 90% of the world's land surface now having a mobile phone signal, it is truly a global phenomenon. And when I was getting this way, I was racking my brains, trying to come up with some punchy image that would just bring home how much this has transformed our individual lives and our society. How has the web changed us? And I was really stuck. And I came across this headline two weeks ago in the Irish Examiner. And that for me, more than anything else, brought home just how much our society has changed in less than 20 years. But we're now about to embark on the next step with the internet and the web. And all the forecasts are that it will make the current internet and its impact on our society look trivial. We're about to connect the physical world to the internet, the planet, Everything on it will become things on the Internet of Things. And not just web pages about the things, but there is real physical presences that we can observe and control. When I say things, exactly what do I mean by things? I mean literally everything and anything. The things we encounter in our daily lives, the machines and appliances we use in our jobs and at home, the buildings we live in, the cars we travel in, even we ourselves will become part of this internet of things. Now as a technologist, the first question I ask is, how will we do that? I don't care whether it's useful or not, I just want to know how we do it. And I want to take as an example this chair as a thing on the internet of things. I want to know from anywhere in the world, is this chair occupied and who is sitting in it? Now, to turn this chair into a smart chair, a smart object in the Internet of Things, I have to take a number of steps. First of all, I have to give it a unique identity. So that I go to this chair as opposed to all the other chairs in the world. And the current addressing protocol for the Internet, IPv6, effectively gives us unique identities without a practical limit. Anything we can conceive of on the planet or even off it that we want to put on the Internet of Things, we will go to the unique identity. I need to give it the ability to communicate. Kind of that's where this communication these days. The third step is that I need to give it senses. I need to put sensors on it that will tell me whether something about the chair or can tell me something about the environment around it. In this case, I put a pressure sensor on the seat so that I know it's occupied. And I put a little RFID tag reader so that the, per the tagged person who is sitting on it be identified. I go on my smartphone anywhere in the world and I know who's sitting in my chair. And I'll do that. Look, the final thing I can do if I have a machine or an appliance or a vehicle, I'm able to reach out and control it from anywhere. And I do that using very small embedded electronic circuits and they're getting smaller and cheaper every day that I can embed in it or on it. Now, Good question. What exactly will we do? What practical use will all this be? And it really seems to be only limited by our imagination. But I want to take six little scenarios here this evening, which I hope will begin to illustrate the potential impact on our lives and society. We've been to connect with things and learn about things in a completely new way with the Internet of Things. Now, only the true geeks in the audience will recognize what this is. They're probably too ashamed to admit it. It's a tricorder from the original series of Star Trek. Captain Kirk and the lads could walk up to anything and anybody, point a tricorder, and they'd learn all about it. The physical chemical composition of what was in front of them. Walk up to the person, their state of health, were they hostile, was it life between you and the captain? With the Internet of Things, your smartphone will become a tricorder. Walk up 
to anything in learn mode. Pack our food in the supermarket. Its ingredients, their origins, dietary, allergy, advice. Woke up to this piano. Who was playing it over recent years? What music was played on it? A completely new way of interacting with the world and learning about the things that you're encountering. You walk up to a person, they've agreed to share some information. It might be something as simple as a business card. In a social context, you might learn things about their interests and their inclinations this evening. If you make Facebook look like, look like a minor event. The Internet of Things just also allow us to reach out and monitor things, observe things. Let's say I have a heart problem. I can wear a wireless cardiac monitor, they're commonly used in hospitals these days. But the next generation will be web-linked. It's my smartphone, which has a cardiac app, and monitor my heart rhythm to give me early warning. Our remote hospital computer can monitor me 24-7 with powerful algorithms and predict maybe weeks or even months ahead that I'm heading for a problem. Or I can just let my relatives see that my heart is still beating. And with the number of people over 65 set to double, e-health and telemedicine will be one of the big areas of the Internet of Things. One of my favourites, reality search engines. Instead of using Google just to search this 4,000 exabytes of information, I get really useful things, like ask Google, where are my keys? Because my keys are tagged, locatable objects on the Internet of Things. Where is my child? And as the father of a teenage daughter, I'll be first in the queue. I'm a food processing company instead of shellfish. I can not only know where the food delivery is, but its entire storage and shipping history since the moment it came on board the trawler. If I know what things are doing, and I can know how things are feeling, or their parameters of where they are, I can better manage things. Now, 51% of the world's population now, lives in, now live in cities. And we need a better way to manage our cities, which are quickly becoming many of the mega cities. If I know where vehicles are, where they want to go, if I know where energy is flowing, then I can predict where it's energy usage. If I know where the citizens of my smart city are, what they're up to, what their health is, I can better manage traffic and maybe eliminate congestion. I can have better energy efficiency, make better use of renewables. I can look after the individual health, safety and security of all my citizens. I can also reach up and control things. Now you might have read about Electric Ireland rolling out a trial of smart meters in Ireland to a few thousand homes. These are meters which communicate with the appliances in your home and the grid. And an example that's commonly used is you put the wash in the washing machine, but you don't decide when it's turned on. The grid does. And you can say to the grid, I'd like to use green electricity, please. Or you can say to the grid, I don't care what electricity I use, as long as it's cheap. But the grid will decide based on balance and on energy efficiency and on using renewables when your wash should actually go on. You sacrifice some of the control we're very, very fond of, but perhaps we could be persuaded to do that in personal interest of getting cheap electricity and in the interests of better society. The current internet is very, very important for gaming. Gaming is one of the big things that happens on the internet, and it will be even bigger on the internet of things. This is a screenshot from a company called Layer. You can get this off of your smartphone now, and you can superimpose using the camera on the smartphone, the game environment on the real world around you. With the Internet of Things, not just a picture of what's around you that would be part of the game, but the objects and the people in that environment would become part of the game. It would transform the face of gaming as we know it, and already imaginations are running riot in the gaming industry. Where would we be in 20 years? It would be a very, very rash person who would make a concrete prediction. Nobody back in 93 would have predicted the impact of the web on our lives. But the one thing that always hits me is that by 2032, we could individually be in contact with up to 5,000 smart things in our everyday lives. 
a contribution to be transformative. Could it be the most useful The science fiction writer Ian and Banks has written about a future society, which he called the culture, where humans have delegated control of the planet and its resources to a network of artificial intelligence. And this network looks after the resources and allocates the resources to everybody according to their needs. Everybody's needs are met and strength is eliminated. I'm not saying the Internet of Things will produce that utopia, but perhaps elements of it are possible. If we can better manage and control traffic, maybe we can finally eliminate the carriage on our roads. If we can better manage energy, perhaps we can finally get to grips with the death wish that we seem to have for our planet's planet. If we can monitor and look after the health of individual citizens, perhaps we can reduce the chaos that seems to be inherent in our health systems, and perhaps the situation where your, your access to health depends on your income can be eliminated. Not a complete utopia, but perhaps elements which are possible. Would it just be a technocracy? Who would point technology companies? You know what? I think we already live in a technocracy, whether we like it or not. Look at the influence that a company like Apple has. They bring out smartphones, they bring out pads, and they become the two fastest growing technology sectors in history. Apple recently became the most valuable company ever. And in an increasingly technological world under something like the Internet of Things, they will have enormous influence on society, not maligned by any means, but technocratic in nature and in fact. The social theorist Jeremy Bentham in the late 18th century, conceived of an institution which he called a panopticon, where all the inmates could be observed 24 hours a day without ever knowing whether they were being observed or not. The Internet of Things is the ultimate global panopticon. Privacy as a concept under the Internet of Things may become meaningless. It's one of the big societal concerns. Now, it has positive aspects. My heart monitor detects an arrhythmia. So I sit down, I call an ambulance. That's good. And while I'm sitting there, I get this message coming through. If you tried our latest one, you wouldn't be sitting there waiting for an ambulance, would you? When you know how individual people are using individual products, then individually focused advertising becomes possible. And it will transform the face of the marketing and advertising industry but also the major intrusion. But, more ominously, it made a condition of your health insurance that your health insurer has to have access to the cardiac data. And while you're sitting there waiting quietly for the ambulance, this message comes through. And it's probably a sad reflection that this could actually be a reality. The Internet of Things has also been termed a potential weapon of mass disruption. We've seen the damages, damage that viruses, trojans, and worms can do on the current internet. If our energy systems, safety and security, transport and health systems are all part of one big worldwide web, the possibilities for terrorism and hacking are magnified almost beyond belief. Already researchers hacked into pacemakers, incident pumps, cars, and smart meters, you'd have read about the worm that attacked the Iranian nuclear plant. Security under the Internet of Things has been called a shocking vulnerability. But it's also a major opportunity for the security software industry. Oops. Anytime now. If I shut down some other stuff. <laughs>